Have you ever wondered why is there a triangle eye in the one dollar bill? No. Or why the symbol for medicine is two snakes and a staff? Of course And not. why the Pope and the Bishop's staff shows the same exact thing, along with a weird hey. pine cone. Well, in this video, I'm going to explain to you the occult meaning of the snake, the pine cone, and the number 33. All of this started in the world's oldest religion, Hinduism. But it also influences the practices of many secret societies around the world, including the Freemasons. Now, in order to explain what these symbols mean, we first have to know some basic human anatomy. Now, there are 33 bones that make up your spine. And if you go all the way up your spine and spinal cord, you will eventually reach something known as the pineal gland, which is a small gland located in the center of the brain. That also looks very much like a pine cone, hence the name pineal gland. Even though the pineal gland is still a great mystery in science, we do know certain things about it. For example, we know it has calcite microcrystals that may allow it to behave as some sort of receiver or antenna. It also has photoreceptors just like your eyes. And it receives the highest concentration of blood flow more than any organ in the body, and it's the size of a grain of sand. Now, throughout history, the pineal gland has been known as the third eye, which is considered a gateway to higher states of consciousness and spiritual enlightenment. Originally, in Hinduism, it represented something known as Kundalini Awakening. According to the Hindus, Kundalini was a very powerful energy dormant at the base of the spine, which when awakened through meditation, it gradually rises up your seven chakras or 33 vertebrae and reaches your pineal gland. This brings a state of self-realization known as Samadhi, where you become one with pure consciousness. Now, this is all represented by two snakes climbing a staff and reaching a little circle or pine cone, which when awakened, sprouts with wings. This is the same symbol for the Caduceus Staff of Hermes, who is the messenger of the Greek gods, which is the only one that can travel between the higher and lower realms, which are literally just states of consciousness. It also influences Egyptian pharaohs, who symbolized an awakened pineal gland with a snake on their forehead. They also believed that the pineal gland was the seed of the soul and the connection to the gods. But its weirdest connection is its influences on the religions of today, especially with the number 33. Jesus was crucified at 33 in the year 33 AD. There are 33 million gods in Hinduism. The name Elohim, sometimes translated as God or gods, appears 33 times in the Hebrew Bible. The 33rd time Noah's name is mentioned in Genesis, God offers him salvation. In Islam, there is a ritual prayer where you say that 33 times, that 33 times, and that 33 times. All done for the purpose of reaching spiritual perfection and oneness with God. 33 is also the numerical equivalent for the Star of David and the word Amen. And finally, as a final thought, the 33rd time Jacob's name is mentioned in Genesis, he has the vision of a ladder that goes to heaven where he sees God. And he calls the place the Pineal. So I want you to ask yourself, could it be that all of these stories, all these things are just metaphors pointing to something that's actually within us? And that the key is nothing outside of you, it's actually just yourself. Truth can't be told, it must be discovered. So I want you to actually go out and meditate and find out what it is I'm talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're welcome. You're welcome. If you haven't seen a video like that explaining anything like that before, never got into studies like that, you're welcome. Go ahead and look it up. Let me give you a little breakdown. You know why he brought up 33 vertebrae in the spine? And he brought up that Christ was 33 years old when he was crucified. The two snakes wrapping around the pole, right? The kundalini energy raising from the root chakra to the crown chakra. The, um, the ankh representing the flow of energy from the spine up into the crown chakra and back down to the root. The different things that there is available for you as far as the type of being that you are it seems to be infinite. And it's funny because you're created in the image of the infinite. Huh. You know, um, I heard the other day someone saying that, um, you know, the universe is like a hologram. You know, in any part of the universe, you can see the rest of the universe. Like you can, and the body is the same way, right? In any one part of the body, you can see the rest of the body. You can even get to understand the universe better by studying the body better at a deeper molecular level. He talked about the basically like a crystal formation inside of the pineal gland, right? And uh, how it can act like a receiver. 
these are all things that I'm bringing up just so that you as a viewer watching this, if you're just one person watching this, it doesn't even matter. It's meant for you to watch right now and understand and get told this information. These are the things that you probably should be studying on. These are the things that you should probably, after this YouTube video, cut it off and look this up. Just do it. Why not? Take a second. Who knows, bro? Who knows what you'll find? But I love when people come together and exp express their understanding. Let me say it like that. Let's make a deal. Don't tax us. Oh, no, no, God, no. No, we were just wondering if the money that you make by us not taxing you, could we like maybe borrow it? With interest? Yeah, no, sure, of course, no problem. Well, where are you gonna get the money to pay us back? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> John F. Kennedy, born on the 29th, he's a seven life path, you're the snake. Those type of energies basically tell me he would be into numerology and astrology. What makes me know he was into numerology and astrology was the fact that he signed executive order 11110. Think about it, 1111, 110. He waited to that executive order. He signed it at 6 4 1963, as of the 29th, 11. So he signed an executive order 1111 on an 11 day. He's born on the 29th, 2911, and that stripped the Federal Reserve of the power to print money. He did that. What happened to him six months later? He died. And Lyndon Johnson, the guy who replaced him, before the body was even cold, his first act as president, repeal executive order 11110. Give the Fed back their power. Is that a conspiracy? No, that's a fact. If this is true, because I don't know, we should look into this deeper. If y'all want to see a video where we look into this subject deeper, let me know down below in the, in the comments. If this is true, though, do you think that's why no president to date has tried to take power from the Fed again in fear that they would be assassinated? Because that would be the one thing, bro. That would be the one thing any president could do with an executive order to immediately change life in America. Immediately. And when I, I mean immediately, bro, no more military industrial complex. None of that, because you can't just print the money no more. You can't just go and be like, oh, let us get another $10 trillion and then make the fucking citizens pay for this shit. Eh, fucking make it $11 trillion. No, you can't do that, bro. You can't do that without the Fed, dog. You have to have backing. You have to have gold. You have to have something that powers the currency that you're using. Real money. You got to have real money, bro. Ah... That's interesting. I wonder if that's a real thing. Did is that why they assassinated Kennedy? Ugh. Ugh. That's tough. That is tough. Damn, bro. Yo, if you've never seen the assassination, <clears throat> assassin, assassin, assassination assassination of John F. Kennedy, don't go watch it. Don't go watch it. Bro, they blew this man head off. They blew his damn head off. I mean, they hit him straight in the forehead, and it was like the back of that dude's head exploded. Yeah, sorry. If you squeamish, like, I probably shouldn't even have said that much. But I did. My bad. New era. I'm feeling quite bad, so take another